Well, down here at the Beltone Hearing Center uh, to hear about uh, what possibilities might exist to cure my lifelong struggle with hearing loss. I'm actually, as I found out today and confirmed just about uh, 40 minutes ago, significantly, massively, this year is just for show. This is, this, is, this is my aesthetically pleasing year because it doesn't do much in the way of hearing. And uh, in order to get over that hump, uh, we're going to uh, learn a little bit more about the devices that exist uh, to rectify that situation. Uh, Ira, once again, uh, bringing you in here. Now, when I was in grade two, I had a hearing aid mm -hmm. and I absolutely loathed it because essentially it was either loud or not loud. Right. Those are the only options that I've had. I'm assuming that things have changed quite significantly since the 1980s. They have. I've been an audiologist since 1972, and when I started, all we had was a screwdriver <laughs> and a hearing aid to work with. Uh, we'd send the audiometric data to the manufacturer who would build a hearing aid for us, hardwired, and then we would make some slight adjustments. Is it better this way or better that way? And that would be pretty much all we can do. Now we can adjust each frequency individually. Um, we can do so many more things than we were able to do years ago. Uh, the hearing aids have also changed. A lot of the hearing aids now are wireless. So you've got the wireless 2.4 gigahertz technology. So you can actually stream your iPhone to the hearing aid. You can stream TV to the hearing aid using uh, iPhone applications. Uh, hearing aids can be as small as this little guy in here. That is, yeah, and that was one of the issues I had with uh, my mm -hmm. hearing aid when I was younger, is that it was just so big and mm -hmm. massive and it basically stuck out like a sore thumb, or in this case, a sore ear, mm -hmm. whereas these ones are obviously much more compact mm -hmm. and right. uh, they're easily hidden by comparison. Yeah, and this one's yeah. even smaller than that thing you wear behind your ear, <laughs> so <laughs> no one would ever notice it. If you take a look at the uh, monitor, you can see yeah. the different styles of hearing aids. We have our micro uh, CIC completely in the canal, which is the smallest hearing aid. It goes mm -hmm. all the way deep into your ear canal pretty much invisible, and they just get larger, and, and, and basically it's, a, l a lot of it is dexterity um, and type of hearing loss, which would determine what type of hearing aid you need. If you have a pretty severe hearing loss, you really go all the way over to the right end with that larger over-the-ear hearing aid. Okay, so this is, when we're talking about my left ear, and we, we saw that there was, uh, what was the term that we used? Uh, catastrophic <laughs> hearing loss? No, yeah. but it was... But this would be probably okay. be the, the, the range that I would be in, right? Uh, probably not. Uh, oh, we, no? can, we can okay. go with uh, probably with that smallest behind the ear. Okay. Uh, um, this one right here. But again, I, I, do, I do want to caution you that uh, there's a lot more testing that needs to be done right. on your hearing. Uh, we've got to, because you, your right ear is better than your left, we've got to actually mask out your right ear to make sure that the thresholds we got in your left ear are accurate. And so you do really need a full assessment. So basically, this is just for demonstration purposes. Oh, and absolutely. Okay? Yeah, yeah, we, we want, want to make sure that. Just want to make thorough. sure you understand that, okay? Yeah. Cool. Um, um, but there are a lot of different types of, of things that we can do with hearing loss. Um, a lot of people, there are people who have something called atresia, mm. where there's no visible canal or no actual ear canal. And so they can't wear a hearing aid. But we do have something called a bone anchored hearing aid, where an actual, where the screw is drilled into the bone, mm. and then a receiver is attached to that, snaps on, and there's your hearing aid. And so the hearing aid sends vibrations through the bone, which are then picked up by the cochlea, and then the sound is transmitted to the brain. So you're able to hear through bone vibrations where you wouldn't be able to wear a hearing aid. Someone who has really bad discharge from his ear, who can't wear anything in his ear, can also benefit from something like this. Wow. Okay. I'm absolutely wonderful how far yeah. modern technology has come with respect to this. Right, then there's the cochlear implant, which is becoming more and more common uh, for uh, people with uh, children, especially with absolutely no hearing. Uh, the, again, you see the uh, implant here, then there's a receiver attached to the outside, which is connected to a hearing aid. And then the hearing aid picks up the sound, sends it to the transmitter, which then sends it across to the receiver and into the cochlea, and then you can hear. That is so. absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and I know that, as we mentioned, a lot of kids uh, suffer from that as well, because mm -hmm. uh, it's not just an old age condition right. that uh, we're seeing. So we're going to be back out here in a little while. Uh, I think we're actually going to be molding. We're going to do a mold of your ear, and then right. we're also going to listen to what you hear in yes. that left ear. A really cool test to just give you a sense and proof that if I'm ignoring you, Jason, back in studio, it's not because I'm choosing not to listen to you. Honest. Well, based on those things in the side of your head, I hope they have the mold big enough. Good luck.